July, everybody. It's actually the 5th, but we had 4th of July yesterday, which was a good thing. Lots of good fireworks show, plenty of good food. Hope you all uh, had a good 4th of July this year. So we come now, today, uh, at this time of the, we're in summer now, full bloom. So we come now today at this time, thinking about Asuyeda, well I can't talk this morning, Asuyeda, choice. Uh, our readings from today, we're going we're gonna to jump right into the readings here. I'm not going to make a whole lot of comments since they are opening this morning, but uh, I'll talk some more into this. Let's go to our Hebrew Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. 1 through 5, never mind. I somehow managed to transpose numbers here and make it look like I'm going a lot more than that. We're just going to do uh, Ezekiel uh, 1 through 5. Chapter 2, 1 through 5. He, meaning God, of course, said to me, O oh, mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when God spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard God speaking to me. God said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent, and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says God. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Our reading from the New Testament today is going to be Magad 6, 1 through 13. Magad meaning Mark 6, 1 through 13. Unu gojeno na nani ale uwasan ujeli gohi ulu jehi gawazda wadi dohi no. Gawazda wadam sehi Unado da quas ga no Uliye loham Ule nahi Do de yone Di gala wiz di ye Uni chani tino Gawada gani la Unis quadi go si di Pia Nani wiz di e Agla, Ageham, Pia, Azgaya, Pia, Nazgi, Igawada, Nadi, Jiski, Ale, Gado, Uzdi, Agado, Ahisdi, Nazgi, Aji, Nailahi, Jiski, Nazgi, Iyosdi, Uzqua, Nigodi, Jida, Lawizda, Neha, Plasgo, Nazgi ya de nizgi stigi yigi meili uweji jimi ale josi ale jada ale sawani ani excuse me ana li nazli ale judu klasko ani yegaga da sanya ugawa no so na je na go no chisa no Ya Nida We Se Le Hi Adole Hoski Utla Naja La Quo Dana U Yigosi U J Ligo Is Di Nino Na Uvasan Ale Ja Na Hi Jawi Ja Yawi Ane Ha Hi Ale Uvasan Gane La Hi Ale 
na na purla go pansi usqua ni godi niga var la wisda nadi yige sai uwa sanske ni no na ilasgi ya ni da yo ni fla gi da sita da ale da na wa na i ale usqua ni go sai na no hi yu hansga na ke san hi ale u we de we de o le a da we da de ga na wa di san hi da de yo han ske hi fla da no i ya ne da we da ya ne hi hi ale da na ale da na si do le ta li han cha they go na da a le da las go la da ne li ju ni na go we sti yi di ga da ha di da na go a le da na che li na sti go ha sti u ne ya sti yi ni ge sa na u na le sti ta la do yi di a ne do ha yi a do la na sti u wa sa u la de ga lo di Ale gadu, ale ga i i, da na da fla ha i. Jan ala sa la di i ski ni, ale tle sti tla i da i ja i di ja nu wo sti sti. Ale i a ni da we le se i a da ne la. I hi i la hi fa i j y i s d na 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 ko i j na s g s d g n i u j s u j n e g i a na na a l e g i l o n i d i j a n a l i g a n e n a a l i a l e n i j a d a s t a n e h a i n a i g s s d Na ko na na i i ja ni gi ski ski di ja la si de ni go sta de ji na go ha di se ji di na ski go hi ya di ski u na fla di ski u do hi ya hi ya hi ya ni ja wai se ha is ga ko hi ga i u ni gi li yo i ski. Is di so da mi ale go ma lai di ga go de la yi di ga ge is di u tli hi ya na na ga da ha i u ni nu go sti no wa ni wa na li sto di na zgi ya i wi a se ja ni ne la is di ge sa da na da na da i. Uni jati na, dani na go wesi hanis gina, o ale goi dani lo na dani, o ni jati ja ni tlagi ale dani na wani. Amen. Cherokee Corn Festival. This is a season for the. Cherokee Green Corn Festival, or the Green Corn Festival, as it is actually shared by many nations across the lands, and I really miss going to the Green Corn Dances out there, the new Green Corn Dances out there, and the Pueblos up in Mexico. Those are a blast. You ever get a chance, you need to go check that out. Green corn dance, the old ones tell us now, the green corn dance was a time when the people, the clans, would come together to fast and pray. The elders would fast and pray. And then they would bring, their, bring the people together. It was a time of cleansing, time for forgiveness of wrongdoings, wiping the clean, slate clean, so to speak. And uh, you know all the wrongs from the past year, set aside, forgot. 
gone. And everybody got to start a new life, new beginning. And it's right now. This is the season for that. Purification, cleansing, and uh, the young people would uh, bond together for the coming future on behalf of the clans. There'd be all kinds of fun, celebration, good stuff going on. It was a time of uh, starting over. And it was also a time when the, the wisdom of the elders would be shared and the prophets would be heard. And there's one thing we, uh, we know, and that is that the prophet is a messenger sent from God. But guess what? The prophet is not responsible for the choice that the listener makes. Think about that. Prophets are messengers who bring an opportunity from God for cleansing, for the wiping of the slate. Start over fresh, just like the green corn beans. God would pick somebody, say, hey, you know, like Ezekiel, you go back to Ezekiel here, and we look at what happened to him. You know, here he is just tootling along, doing his thing. And here God comes in the middle of the night and says, get up. Get up on your feet. I got something to say, and you're going to listen. I have picked you, and you're going to go. There was no, would you like to go? Would you like to help the people? How do you feel about being chosen by me? It was God saying, you're going to do it, and that's all there is to it. And don't worry about it, because what I tell you to say is going to be for me, and it's not your job to convince these people to listen. It's your job to share the message. The rest is up to them. The rest is their choice. And that's what Ezekiel did, apparently. You have to do some more reading, get in there and check that out, front and back. And, uh, and God had some feelings around the people, you know. Call them all kinds of cool stuff, like they should rebel, they rebel against God. And, you know, I, I understand here that the United States Supreme Court has jumped on board with uh, granting legal, legal right for equal marriage to whoever and there's been some uh, some opposition to that there's been people who call themselves believers who have openly said that in their churches gay marriage will not be supported and uh, you know that's reminiscent to me to the rebellious house Obeys people. God has made it clear through Jesus who, in every way possible, can be called a prophet, among many other titles. Made it clear that we are to love others and set that good example to follow, not being inhibited. And so it's unfortunate that there are so many uh, Christians who continue to believe that they are morally superior and that they have the right to practice religious discrimination and institutional racism. It's unfortunate, but they do. In this day and age, it's still very strong here in North America, while the rest of the world has already moved on for the most part. I know in Europe, that marriage has been around for a long, long time. So, there you go. And we look at uh, what Jesus says here in Mark about what he was doing. Oh, I never did read that in English. Oops. My apologies. Let me read that in English so everybody can understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Mark 6, 1 through 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. 
They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. And he went uh, among, he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunes. He said to them, Wherever you, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many with oil, many who were sick and cured them. And anointed with oil, many who were sick and cured them. All right. Again, my apologies for not reading that in English. I knew what it was about, so <laughs> I just moved on. Y'all just uh, looked at a read some more about that. But what I'm talking about here is God yanked Ezekiel up to his feet and said, hey, get busy. I'll take care of it from there. And likewise, likewise, Jesus saw, went around, preaching, teaching, curing the sick, doing all kinds of wonderful things. He got to his hometown and they wouldn't listen. They were rebellious against God's prophet, teacher, son, healer. They rebelled against him because they knew who he was. They knew his history, his childhood. He grew up there, more or less. They knew him. They knew his family. And they held that against him. They decided to make the choice to minimize what he was saying, what he was doing, rationalize their rejection of God's message of love and peace. They made the choice to reject God's cleansing and cleaning of the slave. They made that choice. And in this day and age, right now, as we see that Jesus was rejected by his own people, we know other prophets who were rejected too. How many of people, or how many times have you rejected one of God's messages in your life and in your presence because you knew the person? Or you had some other agenda that you wanted God to adhere to? You didn't want to listen. Why would anybody make that choice? Well, let's think about that. You know? The first question that comes to mind is, what's in it for me? Well, we know from Jesus' perspective, making that choice to listen to the prophet, just like Israel and Ezekiel, I mean, what happened at the time when Ezekiel was called, you know, Israel had just had their butts kicked by the Babylonians, and they were sent off to exile. And Ezekiel was being called to tell them, hey, if you want to get out of this, this is what you're going to have to do. And they didn't like what they were hearing. They didn't like what was going on. And it's the same right now in North America. There's a lot going on here in North America that's not about 
practicing the principles and teachings of Jesus, but about choosing to be rebellious against God, against family, against community, against everyone, whether it's legal or moral or whatever. It's amazing how many different ways people can come up with to justify ignoring God's messengers, ignoring God's messengers. So you think about that, you know? What if you were in Ezekiel's shoes? What if God put you up on your feet today and said, I'm calling you to go out on the streets and to tell the people in my name to love everyone and treat everybody with dignity and respect. Would you do that? Would you answer that? Or would you be rebellious and talk back to God about it? You want to argue like Jonah or you want to be God's messenger? What are you going to do? What, you, what choice are you going to make? Because that's what Jesus is calling you to do. Calling you to be a prophet, a teacher, a supporter of the word. What are you doing? How are you allowing God's message to flow through you? Or are you? And how are you choosing to respond to the messenger, to the prophets that God sends your way? Are you supporting them? Or are you talking down to them like people did in Jesus' hometown. It's time for you to look at that. When Allah sends a messenger into your life, and you make the choice to embrace this opportunity for cleansing and new beginning, Trash the messenger in order to stay safe. Stay in your own country.